Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have KV55. This is a tomb that is referred to by a number rather than a name because we don't actually know who lies inside of the tomb. While this tomb had its modern discovery in 1907, we still haven't quite found the answers surrounding this mystery. To make things a little more eerie, while the walls of the actual tomb are bare, which is bizarre, as you walk down the steps towards the tomb, you'll notice that there are some markings leading up to it. You'll see inscribed on the wall of the entrance the words which can be translated to, quote, the evil one shall not live again. If this wasn't enough to give you an unsettling feeling, the coffin inside of the tomb has been desecrated with part of the face having been removed as well. So all in all, we don't know a lot about what's going on down there, but it doesn't seem good. In our number 9 spot today we have chapter 17. Archaeologists had a large and very exciting discovery as the 4,200 year old funerary temple of Queen Neerit, who was the wife of the pharaoh Teddy, was found. The recently excavated Soraka necropolis was stocked full of incredible treasures. Inside there were over 50 wooden sarcophagi, there was a board game, a river boat with rowers, statues, wooden masks, a shrine dedicated to the god of the dead Anubis, and there was a burial sanctuary dedicated to the queen, and while all of these are truly unbelievable finds, one of the most fascinating to researchers was a scroll from the Book of the Dead. The 13 foot long papyrus scroll, which is referred to as chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead, acts as a chilling guide to the afterlife. In our number 8 spot today we have Golden Tongues. A team was working at a temple on the outskirts of the Egyptian city Alexandria when they discovered 16 burials in rock cut tombs. It was here that they found some mummies that unfortunately had been poorly preserved over the last 2000 years, but it was what they found with these mummies that was exceptionally interesting. Inside a few of the mummies mouths were golden tongues nestled inside of their jawbones. It is thought that the dead were given these gold foil amulets that were shaped like tongues so that they could speak before the court of the god Osiris in the afterlife. Osiris is the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life, and vegetation, and he was also the judge of the dead so it is imperative that those headed to the afterlife impress him. When we break it down and understand why these gold tongues might have been placed with the bodies, it becomes less of a horrifying discovery and more of an absolutely fascinating one. In our number 6 spot today we have Marcus. Inside the necropolis of Porto Sarno, which was found in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, a tomb was found which held the remains of Marcus Venerius Secundio, and these remains are the best preserved ones ever found in ruins. The partially mummified remains included hair and bones and even a partial ear, and they belonged to Marcus, who was a former slave who was able to rise through the ranks. This discovery was unusual because tests showed that Marcus died around the age of 60, and during Roman times, adults were usually cremated. After being freed from slavery, Marcus was able to join a college of priests who were in charge of a form of emperor worship. Being buried inside of a tomb is a reflection of the fact that when he passed, he was in good social and economic standing. It is believed that this tomb dates back decades before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD destroyed Pompeii. In our number 5 spot today we have Tomb Storeroom. During the excavations of a 2,600 year old vast necropolis that sits just south of Cairo, researchers unearthed a tomb, of course, or else why would I be talking about it right now, but here's the thing about this specific tomb. It had a storeroom that was housing about two dozen mummies. The tomb was located at the bottom of a 36 feet deep shaft, and the 22 mummies were found along the tomb walls. The mummies are believed to date back to 640 BC during the 26th dynasty, which was Egypt's last independent kingdom. Many of the mummies were unfortunately poorly preserved, so their identities, as well as the reason why so many were put into one room, is left as a bit of a mystery. In our number 4 spot today we have a Bronze Age tomb. Imagine you're a farmer in Ireland and one day you're just minding your own business and somehow manage to stumble upon an ancient tomb that's basically been untouched for thousands of years. Well, that's pretty much exactly what happened when a burial site was uncovered on southwest Ireland's Dingle Peninsula. Inside this site, researchers found human bones along with items that may give us some insights into prehistoric burial and death rituals. This tomb is believed to date back to the Bronze Age, but unlike other tombs from the time, this one was 
completely underground, which means that it may be even older than once suspected. The tomb was found during some land improvement work when literally a stone was turned over and it revealed the chamber underneath. In our number three spot today, we have mice. A couple years ago, in 2019, as archaeologists were searching through a well-preserved and beautifully painted tomb that had been found in the Egyptian town of Sohog, the tomb is thought to be from around 2,000 years ago and was built for a man named Tutu and his wife. Other than the human mummies that were found inside of this tomb, researchers also found animal mummies, including dozens of mummified mice. This tomb is one of seven that were found in the area after authorities found smugglers digging illegally for artifacts, which honestly sounds like it should be the plot of a movie. While I'm sure these kinds of discoveries are insanely important and helpful for all kinds of researchers, finding dozens of mummified animals along with human mummies probably isn't the nicest discovery there's ever been. In our number two spot today, we have a gibbon skull. Gibbons are a type of ape that are often characterized by their swinging ability coupled with their loud, bright calls, and the 8th century Chinese poet Li Bai described their voices as they swung past the Yangtze River, but here's the thing. Today, there are no gibbons that live anywhere near the river. Also, the gibbons that exist now have different fur patterns from the ones that are often depicted in classical Chinese paintings. This has led experts to believe that there must have been another kind of gibbon that has now vanished, and physical evidence of this kind of gibbon might have turned up in the most unexpected place. A tomb. This tomb, which was built for the grandmother of the first emperor of China nearly 2,300 years ago, contained a skull and a jawbone so distinct that scientists believe they must belong to this member of the now extinct gibbon genus. Many surviving gibbon species are now facing extinction, so it is likely that there were others in the past who unfortunately faced the same kind of fate. In our number one spot today, we have canopic jars. This is a discovery that is actually quite a common find in tombs, but that doesn't make it a pleasant one, although there is a reasonable explanation behind this. Canopic jars are often found in tombs, and in 2018, in the tomb of Carabaskin, which was found on the west bank of Luxor, there were some well-preserved jars found. The jars were made of Egyptian alabaster, and they most likely held viscera. That's right, folks. These jars usually held the organs of the person inside of the tomb. They were used during the mummification process in order to store and preserve the organs so that they could be used in the afterlife. There wasn't just one jar, but rather a jar for specific organs. While in modern times this is a gruesome discovery, it's also absolutely fascinating to see how people of the past cared for those who have passed away, as well as seeing how strong the belief in the afterlife used to be. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have a black granite sarcophagus. In 2018, archaeologists in Egypt found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria, Egypt, that dated all the way back to 2,000 years ago. Rumors immediately started swirling about what this sarcophagus might have contained, but the best way to find out? Well, you have to open it, of course. Instead of some crazy curse being unleashed, the first thing that escaped this tomb when opened was a horrible, unbearable smell. Apparently it was so bad that the site had to be evacuated for a while before they could return to finish opening it up. When they finally were able to completely lift the lid, they found a red, brown-like sewage water flooding the bottom, which is likely where that horrible smell was coming from. Other than all that gross stuff, inside the sarcophagus were the bones of three people. Unfortunately the mummies did not end up being well preserved, so only the skeletal remains were still intact. It is believed that the people inside may have been soldiers from the time of pharaohs. This is believed because one of the skulls had a crack in it from an arrow. There was a bust found along with the tomb, but unfortunately due to time past, it has been weathered beyond recognition, but that is not the only way researchers can find out where the soldiers are from and what time period they lived in. In our number 9 spot today, we have the knife-armed man. In 2018, while researchers Researchers were excavating a 1,200 to 1,400 year old necropolis in northern Italy, they made a gruesome discovery that led to us learning a super interesting story of someone who lived all those years ago. Inside this necropolis there were the remains of a man, but what set him apart from the others is that he had a knife blade prosthetic arm. Further analysis of his bones showed that his arm had been removed via blunt force trauma. Normally all those years ago the wounds would have killed you, if not from the blood loss than from infection because of course this was a time before antibiotics, but somehow this man managed to survive it all, and in doing that, he made himself the scariest prosthetic limb I've ever heard of. He replaced his missing hand with a long knife buckled to his arm with leather straps. It's like pretty metal. <laughs> 
In our number 8 spot today we have the Tomb of Thomas. A few years ago archaeologists were searching in the Tomb of Thomas who is a high ranking Egyptian official. Within the tomb they found jars that contained something they weren't exactly sure of. Well, further research was able to date this substance back 3,200 years ago and guess what it was? Cheese. Dr. Enrico Greco from the University of Catania, who worked with colleagues from the Cairo University in Egypt to determine what this substance was, said, quote, The material analyzed is probably the most ancient archaeological solid residue of cheese ever found to date. We know it was made mostly from sheep's and goat's milk, but for me, it's really hard to imagine a specific flavor. Well, this is a super cool discovery and one that gives us incredible insight into those times thousands of years ago. Imagine finding a thousand thousand year old cheese. That sounds absolutely disgusting. Honestly, I'm so grateful for the scientists who put up with things like that so we can have answers to these sorts of things. In our number 7 spot today we have cats. In 2018, archaeologists were excavating a 4,500 year old tomb that was found near Cairo and if you're a cat person, this one might be one for you to skip over. Inside of this tomb not only did researchers find 100 gilded wooden cats along with a bronze statue of Bastet, the goddess of cats, but they made the startling discovery of dozens of mummified cats. It is known in ancient Egyptian culture that cats were highly regarded and admired by humans. They weren't necessarily worshipped or anything like that, but they did see them as divine. The tomb these cats were found in has been dated back to the 5th dynasty of the Old Kingdom. While the looks of the cats is an absolutely horrifying one, not only was this find incredibly interesting, but it also showed that the mummification process is highly effective. In our number 6 spot today we we have scratch marks. When archaeologists opened a tomb they had located that dated all the way back to the Qing dynasty, they certainly did not expect to find what was inside. They weren't shocked to find the remains of a person, but what was shocking was the state she was in. Her skin had turned black like charcoal and she had a terrifying expression on her face with her mouth wide open like she had been screaming. To make matters even worse, apparently there were scratch marks that she had left on the inside. Further research showed that it is believed that this woman suffered from a difficult birth and during labor she fainted. Since childbirth used to be a way more dangerous activity, it is thought that her family believed she had passed away and then they buried her and of course you know the rest. What a horrifying story for everyone involved. In our number 5 spot today we have the Silver Sumerian Harp. The Silver Sumerian Harp was found in a very large royal tomb of ancient Sumeria. You might be sitting there thinking, a harp isn't exactly terrifying, and I agree. This harp certainly was not a terrifying find, but the scene it was found amongst absolutely was. The tomb contained not only the harp, but the musician who was playing it, along with an entire group of musicians, servants, and several soldiers, all who were sealed in this tomb while they were performing their duties. Many of them were dressed in what was considered formal attire and were wearing gorgeous jewelry. The area where all of these people were found is referred to as the death pit because of the large number of bodies found within it. Music was an incredibly important part of life, celebratory, and ritual occasions in ancient Mesopotamia. In our number 4 spot today we have the Tomb of Sunken Skulls. In 2009, archaeologists were excavating the bottom of a prehistoric dry lake bed in Sweden when they began to find the foundations of some sort of a stone structure. Yeah, we're talking about a tomb found at the bottom of a lake. Further research began to unearth the usual things like animal bones, stone tools, and that sort of thing, but they also uncovered skulls belonging to 10 people that are believed to have lived 8,000 years ago. They found another 11th skull buried deep within the mud, and when they uncovered it, they found that fragments of another one of the skulls had been deliberately lodged inside of this 11th skull. Almost all of the skulls were jawless and were mounted on stakes. There are a few theories as to why the skulls were here, and some people believe that this site may have been used for secondary burials, but others believe that this tomb belonged to enemies that were killed in combat. Either way, researchers were rightfully shocked when they unearthed this tomb. In our number 3 spot today we have biscuit beetles. Okay. I know this one won't be horrifying to everyone, but as you guys know, I really hate bugs a lot, so this one seems like my worst nightmare. 
As it turns out, mummies aren't the only things that tombs can preserve. Unfortunately, some little beetles from 3,000 years ago managed to find themselves preserved inside of a loaf of funerary bread that was found inside of a tomb inside the necropolis of ancient Thebes. Food would often be left inside of ancient Egyptian tombs because they were symbolic offerings intended to feed the deceased in the afterlife. Well, the deceased apparently weren't the only ones chowing down because a bunch of biscuit beetles were found inside the bread. I just can't imagine being stoked to find a mummy and instead finding bugs. In our number two spot today, we have the tomb of Hatshepsut. She was the fifth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt, and she was the second historically confirmed female pharaoh. She was an incredibly interesting person who we could really talk about all day, but we are here talking about tombs, so let's cut to when hers was found and unearthed. There were a few interesting things found within her tomb, but the real hordes came after when they began to examine her remains. They were actually able to find a cause of death for her and can actually attribute it to something she possessed. They found benzoprine carcinogenic skin lotion with the pharaoh, and it is believed that this gave her bone cancer. It is likely that she poisoned herself accidentally while she was just trying to soothe her skin. Being diagnosed with something like that with the help of modern medicine is already a horrible, painful, and scary thing. I couldn't even imagine having to go through it all those years ago without any kind of a treatment. In our number one spot, today we have this ancient curse. To end off this list today we have a good old fashioned curse that was unleashed from inside of a tomb. Okay, maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration, but there really was a curse found on the inside of this tomb. The tomb of Ankh-Mahor, who is a pharaoh's official who is thought to have lived around 4,000 years ago during Egypt's sixth dynasty, was an above ground tomb that was shaped like a rectangular box. Inside of the tomb, they found a curse inscribed that warned anyone who dared to disturb it. The curse, roughly translated, states that anything a trespasser, quote, might do against this, my tomb, the same shall be done to your property. It then goes on to warn the trespasser of his knowledge of spells and secret magic, and it threatens to fill impure intruders with the fear of seeing ghosts. These kind of curses have been found in other tombs, and while they certainly are nothing like the ones depicted in horror movies about mummies, it might still be a little unnerving to those unearthing this discovery. Starting us off at number 10 is King Tut's tomb. I think it's pretty fair to say that King Tut's tomb is just about the most famous one on the planet these days. However, although it was discovered over a century ago, it wasn't until fairly recently that two secret rooms were found hidden inside the tomb. In August of 2015, a prominent English Egyptologist, Dr. Carl Nicholas Reeves, published a 50-page paper outlining the evidence of two hidden doorways inside of King Tut's tomb, and most interestingly, he theorized that the final resting place of of world famous queen Nefertiti, whose tomb has yet to be found, might actually be intact behind the walls in Tut's tomb. Over the years, there have been several scans of the walls to find out more. Some showed evidence of a corridor or void on the other side, while some did not. But honestly, considering the alleged curse entangled with unearthing King Tut's tomb, which was out in the open for all to see, I can only imagine what hell could be unleashed if we mess around with whatever is in that secret room. Coming in at number 9, Brompton. Cemetery. There are a few things it seems pretty safe to want to avoid, and mysteriously sealed mausoleums housing the dead seem pretty high up on that list for me, but apparently not for all. Located in West London in the Brompton Cemetery lies a tomb that some believe to be a fully functioning time machine. Yes, you heard that right. Inside the tomb lies a woman by the name of Hannah Courtois, who had inherited quite a fortune. She was supposedly a friend of Joseph Bonamy and Samuel Warner, the men who built the tomb, and as the story goes, the two men convinced her to finance the secret project with the promise of laying her down to rest inside once it was finished. Strangely, Warner died shortly after construction finished, and some think he died after discovering something horrid inside the tomb, while others speculate Bonamy killed him for revealing the secrets of the time machine itself. It is thought that it is Hannah's burial that is some kind of 
TARDIS capable of whisking one back to ancient Egypt or even turning back the clock and providing youth to those who find it. All that is needed is the large bronze key, but as luck would have it, it has been missing since its creation 150 years ago. Coming in at number 8, Machu Picchu. High in the Andes mountains lies Machu Picchu, an ancient citadel and the most visited tourist location in Peru. However, it seems there may be more than meets the eye after a recent bone chilling discovery. Through the power of electromagnetic equipment, a strange chamber appears to have been concealed behind the walls of the popular attraction. However, despite many appeals, the Peruvian government refuses to allow the door to be opened. Which begs the question, do they know something we don't? It is still considered to be unexplored, as no one has been able to physically get on the other side of that door to check it out, not to mention that those who trespass risk getting a huge fine. I don't know about you, but it definitely feels like they're hiding something from us. But I guess the bigger question is, do we really want to know what? Coming in at number 7, Priest Holes. So, Full disclosure, I know this one isn't really what you would traditionally call a tomb, but I think you'll see why I'm including it on today's list in just a moment here. So way back during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, which spanned from the mid 16th century until the early 17th century, it was not a good time to be a Catholic. In fact, you may or may not recall from high school history class that it was during this time that it was considered a treasonable offense to be Catholic, and practicing Catholic rites was punishable by life in prison or even death. So what this meant was that Catholics were forced to practice in secret. Brave Catholic priests would roam the country performing secret ceremonies in the homes of believers of the religion. However, the Queen was well aware of the rebellion happening under her nose, so she would order her men to roam around the country in order to catch priests in the act. Now this is where the priest holes come in. Priest holes were tiny, cleverly concealed spaces designed to hide a priest during one of these ordered raids. Because remember, if he was found, he along with any of the practicing members in the household would likely die. However, these raids could last for days, even weeks, and so some priests actually died of starvation or suffocation waiting out the search in their cramped quarters. Today the secret chambers remain scattered across the Tudor houses of England, and those that have been inside say they feel this eerie presence of priests who lost their life hiding from execution. Coming in at number 6 an upright tomb. During the Mayan Empire, one of the most important cities in Central America was Copan. Now, Copan existed as a hub of trade and politics from the 5th century to the 9th, and as important as the city was, for many years we knew virtually nothing about it. But all that changed in 2005 with the discovery of this tomb, which so happens to contain the remains of an elite member of Mayan society. Now, what's strange change and a little eerie about this tomb, as opposed to any other one containing an ancient mummified emperor, is that the man inside, who is estimated to have died around 650 AD, was propped upright, sitting in a chair with his legs crossed, which was not typical practice. On top of that, the tomb appeared to have almost been like hidden away inside a temple. Could there have been a specific reason? I mean, what do you think? Was this one we should have just left alone? Coming in at number 5, an unsuspecting tomb. Typically when we imagine ancient tombs, the ones that come to mind are the elaborate mausoleums of kings, queens, or warriors. But of course, they are not the only ones out there. In 2021, the partially mummified remains of Marcus Venerius Secundio were found in a tomb in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii and have been described described as the best preserved human remains ever discovered in the city. Now what's wild about this is the story behind how this man came to earn a tomb. You see Marcus was a slave and the custodian of ancient Pompeii's Temple of Venus. However, he was freed from 
slavery and decided to join the ranks of the Augustales, who were a college of priests in charge of a form of emperor worship. Plus, according to an inscription on the tomb, it seems Marcus helped organize performances in Greek during his time alive. However, even with the wonderful and heartwarming story, it's still strange because it was apparently more typical to cremate bodies during the Roman times than to mummify them. So why was it decided Marcus would be mummified and hidden inside the temple? We may never know. Coming in at number 4, a horror bunker. So this one doesn't really qualify as ancient, I'll give you that, but it is definitely still one of the creepiest ones on this list. Recently, about a month ago, archaeologists stumbled across a horrifying underground bunker close to Anda City in northeastern China that would have been a part of Imperial Japan's infamous Unit 731. Now, Unit 731, for those that are not familiar, was an incredibly cruel biowarfare and human experimentation site during the 1940s that carried out experiments on thousands of prisoners of war, eventually killing an estimated 12,000 of them. Atrocities like amputating victims' limbs without anesthesia, putting them in pressure chambers until their eyes popped out, and injecting them with deadly diseases are only some of the evil committed in the wartime unit. And shockingly, this bunker that was found is thought to have been the largest testing site for that unit, meaning that thousands of men and women were held captive in this secret chamber where most would have also died. So again, would we call it an ancient tomb? I mean, no, probably not, but I think we can all agree it's a seriously eerie find. Coming in at number 3, the mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang. Buried deep in the Shanxi province lies the tomb of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. And as far as famous tombs go, this one is about as high up there as you can get. For a little backstory, while he reigned, Qin Shi Huang wanted to make sure his tomb was a worthy approximation of his own legacy. So he enlisted thousands of laborers who worked tirelessly for decades to create a tomb worthy of being an emperor. Allegedly 700,000 laborers worked on the tomb, and it still took nearly 40 years to build. Now fast forward several thousand years, and what do we find inside? Well, about 7,000 terracotta soldiers, complete with horses, chariots, officers, infantry, and a court. But even more out of this world are the rivers of pure mercury that historians have reason to believe line the inside of the tomb. According to ancient writings, the tomb also contains an entire underground kingdom protected by ancient ballistas and mechanisms that will fire arrows at any potential grave robbers. However, unless that someone is able to get past the underground Mercury River without dying, we might never know for sure. Coming in at number 2, the secret tomb of Genghis Khan. Despite the fact that we all know the notorious 12th century ruler of the ancient Mongol Empire, there is not a soul alive that can tell you for certain just where exactly he was buried. In fact, it has been the subject of many debates over the years. Legend has it that Genghis Khan is entombed in a spot so secretive that anyone who even came near his funeral procession was killed. To make sure it remained a secret, even the 800 horsemen who trampled his gravesite to keep its location secret were executed, along with the 1,000 laborers who escorted his body and dug his final resting place. Just imagine having such loyal followers that you could actually assure this plan would be followed through with without being able to oversee it. Now, to make up for this, a mausoleum has been created to honor him, but it only contains a few personal effects, not his actual remains. His actual resting place might just be the longest kept secret ever. And last up in our number one spot, the Paris Catacombs. It may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of an ancient tomb, but it is where millions have been laid to rest. And if there's one thing that it has in spades, it is secret little nooks and crannies at every turn. It all started in 18th century Paris when cemeteries were in a near hopeless state. You could barely walk through town without smelling the rotting dead bodies, and they were quickly running out of places to put them all. 
But when King Louis XVI came into power, he enlisted his architect to build a system of underground catacombs to transfer all the bodies to. It allegedly took 12 years to transfer all of the bodies, which is no surprise considering the remains of more than 6 million people can be found there. And as you probably guessed, it's wicked haunted. And although many have dared to visit these winding maze tunnels, that doesn't mean it comes without risk. Visitors say they've seen strange orbs of light, taunting voices, and indescribable shadows lurking in the tunnel, while others say they've literally seen ghosts. But the biggest reason to fear the tunnels is because many that enter never return. Several reports of disappearances have happened through the years, and while some have been found, many have remained lost forever. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have fire mummies. This discovery isn't necessarily one that came from a tomb, but it is from an ancient burial site, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. This is something that was discovered when loggers ended up stumbling upon the Kabayan burial caves and found a bunch of tiny nut-like coffins. This led people to wonder how the ancient culture of the Abaloi, the ones who created these burial caves, managed to fit the deceased inside of these small coffins, and the answer is unbelievably fascinating. When a member of the tribe was close to death, they were forced to gulp down a bunch of salt water, which essentially would begin the curing process from the inside out. Once they died, they would be rubbed down with herbs and then literally slow roasted over a period of weeks or months, and it is said to help speed up the process, members of the tribe would blow tobacco smoke inside of the body. In the end, this would create a compact and well-preserved corpse that could be placed into these tiny coffins. The method actually worked so well that you can still see their intricate tattoos to this day. In our number 9 spot today, we have the unmarked sarcophagus. When archaeologists in Egypt found a mysteriously large black granite sarcophagus that was unmarked, they knew they were going to find something unexpected inside, but it truly was worse than anyone could have imagined. When opened, this sarcophagus was found to contain three skeletons, but unfortunately and disgustingly, according to officials, sewage had leaked into the coffin from a nearby road, which left these skeletons resting in that awful mess. Not only do I feel bad for the people who made this discovery, because truly how awful would that be, but I feel terrible for the people these skeletons belong to. Honestly, sometimes I feel like we should leave things and the dead alone, but in times like this, I'm glad these people were found. Further analysis revealed that those buried inside of the coffin included a young woman and two young men, all of which appear to have been placed on top of each other in different burials. One of the skeletons had clearly been on the receiving end of a medical treatment called trepanation, or making holes in the skull. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Lothigam North Pillar site. One of the most incredible archaeological finds in Kenya led to a well. It wasn't exactly a horrifying discovery, but it certainly was unexpected. Around 5,000 years ago, a tribe of herders paused by a lake in what is now Kenya in order to bury their dead. This ended up turning into one of the most massive and monumental construction projects Africa has ever seen, which is no easy feat. For 450 years, they dug into the bedrock, piled up slabs of sandstone, and buried their dead for generations with ritual ceremonies, and this led to what researchers now consider the earliest and largest monumental cemetery in Eastern Africa. Here's the one kind of unexpected thing that they found here at this site though. Along with the bodies of those who had passed, researchers also found 405 gerbil teeth at this site. As it turns out, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for this, and it's because they were used to make a headpiece for just one of those who had passed away. This site might not be as large and tall as some of the other monuments like the Pyramids of Giza, but what makes them most remarkable is that this site was made by the people for the people. Not for emperors or kings and queens, it was for tribe members of every age and gender all buried alongside each other. In our number 7 spot today we have the ancient virus. With modern science comes ancient discoveries. Using advanced DNA sequencing on a 16th century mummy, a team of scientists revealed the complex and evolutionary history of hepatitis B or the HBV virus. The genomic data was extracted from a 450 year old mummy and it is the oldest evidence we have of the virus, which suggests that humans have lived with and evolved alongside HBV. HPV for centuries. While it's terrible to think of people suffering from an infection, especially one that thanks to modern medicine we have a vaccine for, this discovery gives immeasurable insight into the virus itself, and this can be used to help scientists understand it better. While I mentioned that there is a vaccine, this is something that is still highly deadly in our world for people who don't have access to it. The more we can learn about it, the better understanding we can have, which will hopefully in turn save people's lives. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Netherlands Catacombs. Earlier this 
this year while work was being done on a church in Delft, which is in the Netherlands, in order to extend the royal burial chamber that exists within the catacombs, there were about 200 skeletons that were suddenly uncovered. After months of digging, archaeologists reach a depth of 1.5 meters and they had found 150 people in proper graves, with four to five people found buried together in various charnel repositories. The discovery came shortly after there were bones from medieval times found on the square which the church stands, and it is said that researchers were finding a large difference between the two sets of remains. The square is said to have been a burying ground for the poor, while the church was left for the rich, which is where the main difference stems from, as people in the court are usually younger and in notably worse condition. Research is now being done to identify who these people may have been on both accounts. There's something really eerie about finding 200 skeletons located in the catacombs beneath a church. Okay, it's not a little eerie. It's a lot eerie. In our number 5 spot today we have ancient tomb art. This tomb comes to us from a long time ago and it was located in the Shamir Heights in northern Israel. This tomb is large and it's made up of 400 tons of boulders and it stretches 65 feet wide. This chamber is said to date back 4,000 years which is a shocking discovery because that means that humans may have been a part of an organized society in this area all those years ago. There are many paintings that have been found inside of this tomb which made this the first time art had been documented inside one of these chambers in the Middle East, which is incredible. We just haven't exactly been able to figure out what they depict yet. Inside of the chamber there were the remains of three people. One of the most fascinating parts of this discovery is that there are these lines carved into the ceiling that are all connected to one arc, but we just don't know what it means. In our number 4 spot today we have the Inca mummies. In 1976, researchers found two mummies at a burial site in northern Chile. These two corpses belonged to two young women who were the victims of human ritual sacrifice. It is likely that the sacrifice they were a part of was one that was carried out by the Inca to commemorate either historical or political events or as a response to natural disaster. The mummies were found wearing silver ornaments and they were surrounded by ceramic vessels and they were wearing red robes. The red in the Inca clothing was often created using hematite or other iron oxides, but upon further inspection of these mummies, it was revealed that their red clothing held something much more dangerous. The dye used for their clothing contained cinnabar, which is a mineral rich in mercury. This was often used in the ancient world as a pigment for makeup, clothing, and painting, but handling it leads to mercury poisoning. What is strange is that researchers believe that the toxicity of cinnabar was known in ancient Peru, so we aren't exactly sure why they used it in the first place, but it's thought it might have been used as protection against grave robbers. In our number 2 spot today we have the Faliron Delta Necropolis. In 2016, during the construction of a new library and opera house in Athens, crews accidentally stumbled upon this necropolis, which is a cemetery that is the final resting place of more than 1,500 citizens from ancient Greece. And while this most definitely is an eerie discovery and a reminder of our own mortality, the horrifying discovery came when they found a smaller chamber within this one, and inside there were more than 80 skeletons that all had their hands shackled above their heads. How's that for a horrifying discovery? Each of these skeletons belonged to people who died young and healthy, and while the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, all signs are pointing to some kind of mass execution. Right now, the best theory as to who these people may have been is that they may be some of the people who were part of a coup in 632 BC that was led by Cylon against Athens. It's just strange that even after these people passed, they didn't unshackle them, but that just might be a mystery destined to stay a secret. In our number one spot today, we have the ancient mystery. Okay, this is one of the coolest things I've ever heard, and it has me rethinking my career. Maybe I do want to be an archaeologist after all. Basically, researchers have found a 1,300 year old Chinese mystery, and where did they find it? In a Tomb Raider's shaft. This feels like a Hollywood blockbuster, and somehow it's just real ancient life. While excavating a tomb in China, the team discovered the skeleton of a young man who was riddled with wounds, giving clues as to how he died. The man is estimated to have been about 25 years old, and it is thought that he was harmed and then thrown into the Tomb Raider shaft while he was still alive, which is absolutely gruesome. It is believed that this crime took place between 640 and 680 AD. It appears as though he wasn't a thief because the shaft had begun to be refilled with soil by the time of his death, so we really aren't sure why this young man met this cruel fate. As a true crime enthusiast, this is absolutely fascinating, and I really wish we could find some answers to 
bring this guy's story full circle, but sometimes these things just stay a secret. Starting us off at number 10 is King Tutankhamun Part 1. Now, back in the day, and this was done a lot in ancient Egypt, people would place curses on tombs as a safety measure. This was done because if any of the possessions inside a tomb were disturbed, then the person buried or wrapped up inside wouldn't have had a peaceful afterlife. But that fact clearly didn't stop many Egyptologists, including the Earl of Carnarvon, George Herbert, who funded the group Dig in the Valley of the Kings, where King Tutankhamun's tomb was found. George and his daughter travelled to Egypt where they were going to be present when the tomb was officially opened by the Department of Antiquities. However, the father-daughter duo, along with an assistant, went into the tomb multiple times, which was just unauthorised. They even made a breach in the corner of the tomb's doorway and looked inside, and this was the first time modern people had stepped foot in the tomb. Journalists reported that the words, Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king, were inscribed near the door. A few months later, the Earl died from an infected mosquito bite. I don't want to say it's karma, but it was karma. Now, I know that that could be completely unlinked, but a similar lesion was found on the pharaoh's cheek during an autopsy, which is just sus as hell. And to top it all off, all the lights in the Earl's house just blacked out the moment he died with zero explanation whatsoever. So it's safe to say death really did come on swift wings, didn't it? <laughs> but I'm tiss. <laughs> At number eight, we have the unknown tomb. Back in 1699, Lewis Penisher wrote a book called The Treatise on Embalming, and in the book he told the story of a very precarious Polish man. The man had bought two tombs with mummies inside them from Alexandria, hoping to study them for medicinal purposes. Okay, first off, I didn't even know you could just buy mummies and tombs just like that. Like, surely that isn't legal. Either way, as he was sailing back home with the mummies in tow, he started being haunted by two ghosts that magically just appeared on the boat, and of course he knew the ghosts had to be the mummies. He started seeing visions of two figures come at him and was losing his grip on reality. The weather at sea was starting to get a lot worse as well, and so freaking out, he threw the mummies overboard, and peace was very quickly restored. Filling our number 7 slot is Seth the First. Now, back in 1833, German archaeologist Carl Richard Lepsius went to various lectures on the decipherment of the Egyptian language and then travelled to Egypt. There, he undertook a dig in the Valley of the Kings and found a complete undiscovered tomb, which was rare since most of them had been found by then. The tomb belonged to Seth I, and Carl took a full on entire pillar from the tomb back to Berlin with him. As soon as he got back, though, he became sick almost immediately and was rushed to the hospital, where he found out the right side of his body was fully paralyzed. If that wasn't bad enough, he was diagnosed with cancer not long after, and it's believed that the paralysis came to be because of him stealing the pillar from the tomb. Now, I love how people think they can just take whatever the hell they want from these tombs and nothing is going to happen to them. Like, it doesn't work like that, buddy. Something will happen to you. You take a pillar, you get paralyzed. It's a dog eat dog world, people. Savage. Savagery. Savagery. Snakery. Just push it all away. Now, at number six is the annual occurrence. Renowned Egyptologist Zahi Hawass was doing some excavation at the Kom Abu Bilo site, which is the location of various tombs. He was transporting some artifacts from these tombs to a different location, and that was the day things changed for him forever. On that same day as he was transporting the items, his aunt died. Then a year later on the same day, his uncle died. The following year on the same day again, his cousin died. So there had now been three deaths, three years in a row, on the same freaking day. Coincidence? Most definitely not. Newspapers around Egypt pointed to the curse of the pharaohs for being behind the deaths, whereas Hawass himself said the truth is that there is no curse of the pharaohs. <sighs> Ooh, unpopular opinion maybe, perhaps. Hmm, speculation. Coming in at number five is the curious case of George. So Egyptology professor George Reisner was quite a big name back in the 1930s and 40s because he discovered the tomb of Khufu's mother back in the day and basically made media history when he delivered a worldwide broadcast from inside the king's chamber. That's a flex if I ever saw one. Like, I thought I flexed. That is a flex. Either way, by the spring of 1942, Reisner was working inside the pyramid when he suddenly collapsed. Now the thing about George was that he was almost entirely blind, yet he was extremely vocal and articulate and hadn't mentioned anything about feeling sick that day. His team had to drag his body out of the pyramid paralyzed and he died very shortly after. No one knows why or how he died, how he became paralyzed, but by now I think it's safe to say the curse of the pharaohs got him. Ghanim. Ghanim. At number four is the Tomb Raider and no, I'm not talking about Lara Croft 
soft although I really wish I was. So back in 2004 a German man was visiting the valley of the kings in Egypt and stole a relic from King Tutankhamun's tomb. I mean international law would call it stealing, he on the other hand called it a souvenir so I mean that's none of my business. Stealing. Either way when he got back to Germany the man came down with a horrible fever and fatigue despite being 100% healthy days prior. The fever turned into paralysis and soon death. The man's stepson was convinced that the relic his dad had stolen was cursed and returned it to Egypt's Supreme Council for Antiquities hoping that that would allow his dad's soul to rest in peace. I mean honestly if you're disrespectful enough to steal an artifact from a grave then does your soul really deserve to rest in peace? Didn't think so. Next. Filling our number 3 slot is Casimir the 4th Jagiellon and I know there are many pronunciations of his name, the Lithuanian version, the Polish version, like there's many so don't come for me honestly. Now, Casimir had a bunch of royal titles, but the main ones were the Grand Duke of Lithuania and the King of Poland, both of which he upheld from the 1440s till his death. He died in 1492 at the age of 64, and his remains were put inside a tomb and sealed inside the chapel of the Vavil Castle. Fast forward nearly 500 years later, a team of 12 archaeologists ventured to Poland to open his tomb. And when they did, they found his rotten corpse in there, which sounds pretty anticlimactic, like, what else were they expecting to find there? Either way, days after they opened it, four of the 12 archaeologists died and two years later only two people from the team were still alive. One of the survivors was a microbiologist who found fungi in the royal insignia taken from the tomb and this fungi specifically produces aflatoxins that are fatal if they touch your skin or if you breathe them in. So it wasn't the tomb's curse specifically that killed all these people but I mean it was the curse of the fungi and arguably that is more scary you guys. Now at number 2 is the curse of Tamerlan. Now Timur or Tamerlan was a Turco-Mongol Persian conqueror and the founder of the Timurid Empire which is basically modern day Iran. Big dude with big energy honestly, gotta give it to him. Either way, back in June of 1941, a group of Soviet anthropologists went to his burial tomb in Uzbekistan hoping to exhume his body. When they finally got there and opened the doors, they found a chilling message inscribed on his tomb. When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. And it also said, whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. And boy, oh boy, was he not wrong. Three days after his tomb was opened, Hitler in invaded the Soviet Union and so the whole invader more terrible than I was most definitely true. But then get this, after hearing about the situation, Stalin ordered the body to be reburied and then days after that Soviet forces won against German forces when they liberated Stalingrad. So I feel like Tamlin's curse was very much alive when all this was going on. Russia and Germany were like no you bury him, no you bring him back out, no you bury him, no you bring him back out. This guy's body was what decided the fate of World War 2 I just wanted to let you know. It wasn't Hitler, it wasn't the Axis allies powers. It was none of that. And finally, at number one is the god of death, Ominous I know. So back in 1971, which was like semi recent considering the other dates on this list, a group of men led by Egyptologist Walter Brian Emery were doing a dig in Saqqara. The group came upon a hidden tomb in a deep hole, and inside it was the statue of Osiris, the god of death. The statue wasn't even that big, it was like less than 20 centimeters long max, and the worker quickly gave it to Emery, who took it to his dig house. He then went to take a shower, but a few few minutes later his assistant heard some strange moaning noise coming from the house. He went in and knocked on the bathroom door but got no answer. Getting slightly worried now he went inside to find Emery clutching the basin for dear life unable to move with a horrid look of trauma on his face. His assistant had to physically grab him by the shoulders, drag him to the couch and then call an ambulance. The diagnosis was pretty clear, Emery was completely paralyzed from the right side and became unable to speak and sadly died the next next day out of literally nowhere. His team and wife believe the tomb was cursed whereas I believe if you're finding the god of death hidden somewhere deep down in the desert you can't possibly be surprised that you yourself was met with death very quickly later. Just saying. It's logic. 1 plus 1 equals death. Osiris equals death. Hello. Kicking off the list at number 10. EA6736. Ancient Egyptians worshipped lots of animals. At one point or another you've heard about how cats were highly respected back then, but they also worshipped other animals as well. It's not just cats, okay? So if you're sitting there looking at Mr. Freckles or whatever, don't give him too much praise, okay? There's other worshipped animals to talk about, like baboons. Believe it or not, baboons. They were pretty important pieces to this ancient puzzle. Egyptians had tattoos of baboons, but the most famous piece of history that we have preserved is in the collections of the British Museum in London. There's a mummy on display and it looks a little different 
different than the rest. EA6736 was recovered from the Temple of Khans in Luxor, Egypt. This little man here dates back to the New Kingdom period, so anywhere around 1550 BC to 10 BC. So yeah, he's he's a little old. He looks great for his age though, I mean really. Baboons would appear all over art and religion in ancient Egypt. One of my favorite facts ever has to be that in ancient Egypt, pharaohs would train baboons to make arrests. Yeah, imagine stealing a pair for your family and then four baboons start chasing you, doing parkour, jumping over houses. It's crazy, baboons are so smart. No wonder they worship them, honestly. Number nine, Ankhesenamun. This queen was ruling during the 18th dynasty of Egypt. The pharaoh Akhenaten, this was his daughter. She followed in her father's footsteps and was a great ruler, but she was also the wife and half-brother of one King Tut. Her and King Tut had the same father, but their mothers were different. After King Tut's death, however, it's believed this queen may have married the pharaoh a shortly after. And perhaps she's buried near him currently in the Valley of the Monkeys. That's why we can't find her. Back in 2010, DNA testing was being done in tomb KB21, where two 18th dynasty queens were recovered from that tomb in the Valley of the Kings, but not enough data was found from the mummies, but they do know the DNA is from the 18th dynasty royal bloodline, so getting closer. In another tomb though, KB63, numerous coffins were found. One had an imprint of a woman on it, along with jewelry, women's clothing, but the biggest clue really was pottery fragments. Of course. We've all played Assassin's Creed. The truth is in the scenery, my friends. The name Patan was on these pottery fragments, and the only person to ever use this name was the lost queen of Ankin Cinnamon. So we're getting close, but let's maybe, you know, stop destroying other graves in the process. Let's try and find a nicer way to do it. Let's keep hers a secret, maybe. Number eight, King Ramses the Eighth. Number eight, the eighth. You know what I'm doing. The last son of Ramses III, King Ramses VIII. He's the seventh pharaoh of the 20th dynasty. King Ramses VIII. Okay, history is confusing with these numbers sometimes, I tell ya. I had to proofread that sentence a few times when scripting this one up. This lost king had the throne for a very short amount of time and historians are trying to understand why. He was the only pharaoh of the 20th dynasty whose tomb is still out there, somewhere in the Valley of the Kings, just waiting. The thing is, with his ruling being so short, the theory out there is that the tomb of KV-19 that belonged to the son of Ramses IX, many I believe this tomb was originally built for Ramses VIII, but once he became king, everybody was like, eh, maybe not this guy, you know? Yeah, you're not that guy, pal. Apparently you're not that guy. Apparently you weren't that guy. There is a confirmed tomb that was never used for Ramses VIII as well, tomb QB43 in the Valley of the Queens. Made for him, but never used. The poor souls who had to build these, my gosh. Number seven, Luxor tomb. We've been saying 2,500 years ago a lot, and don't get me wrong, that's an awful long time ago with all this ancient history. But in 2014, archeologists discovered a 4,000 year old tomb from the 11th dynasty. Yeah, it was tucked away in Luxor, Egypt all this time. Spanish archeologists found a tomb belonging to a leader from the 11th dynasty. It's pretty obvious this was somebody from the royal family or somebody who was a high ranking official because at the time, Luxor was the capital city of ancient Egypt. Officials believe this tomb could have been used as a mass grave due to the, you know, large amount of human remains found inside. That's a pretty jarring clue. It's important to note that this tomb had also been used during the 17th dynasty because tools and utensils from later on in that time were also found in this tomb. We're gonna find a spork in 5,000 years and be like, ah yes, ancient tools for Gogurt. Number six, the animal tombs. This tomb was found, as you may have guessed, in the Valley of the Kings, like all the great ones here. But this one doesn't sound like the rest. For starters, it's a number rather than a name. What in the Elon Musk is happening here? Whose name was a number, what? Tomb KV50 and KV51 and this one as well, all form a group referred to as the animal tombs. Underneath six feet of debris, the entrance to these tombs were found. So when we enter a tomb normally that's been untouched, ideally for thousands of years, we can find anything. In fact, whatever they do find, it's a win, I guess. It helps complete this age-long puzzle. So when officials opened KV-52 and it was completely empty, that doesn't feel too nice. That's not very warming. It was empty except for two boxes, both black and undecorated. The larger of the two contained the remains of a monkey and the smaller one was a chest and it had four compartments. Yeah, hauntingly bare compared to what else we have on this list coming up. Number five. KV-55. Okay, we covered KV-50, 52, they're all one tomb, but they're not. They're separate tombs. What's going on here? This one was discovered right next to King Tut's tomb, and the reason we call this tomb by a number rather than a name is because, well, we don't know who it was made for, really. The classic, ah, oh, what happened, you know? Even the walls of the tomb inside, they're empty. They aren't covered with any hieroglyphs. There's no artwork. There isn't any clothing laying around, no jewelry. It's quite odd. It's just simply bare. As you walk down the 20 steps towards KV-55, you'll notice only a few markings on the entrance. Markings that show that the the entrance was once widened since it was first cut, along with its ceiling being raised slightly higher. So adjustments were made at some point. This wasn't a forgotten project by any means. The only hint as to who or what is buried here is remains on the walls. One hieroglyph was found in 1907. One hieroglyph, that's it. And it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Okay, so we should leave this alone, right? 
Yeah, you agree? Hit that thumbs up if you agree. I feel like we agree. Number four, Ankhmahor Curse. The walls of some of these tombs have warnings from the gods. One warning trespassers that the gods will wring their neck like that of a goose. That's that's a pretty good warning. I don't know. If I walked into somebody's property now and it said trespassers' necks will be wrung out like a goose, I'd turn around. You got me. You don't need a beware of dog sign. We're all set with that. You don't need to be an ancient god to get that message across. Just don't break into people's stuff. Don't steal stuff. Inside the found tomb of Ankhmahor, a pharaoh official from 4,000 years ago, a curse was written on the walls. It was buried in Mastaba. It was an above ground massive tomb and this warning was the first thing you saw. Might do against this, my tomb, the same shall be done to your property. It also warns of Ekmahor's knowledge of secret spells and magic. And it threatens to fill impure intruders with a fear of seeing ghosts. Again, there's that or beware of dog. You can pick which one you want to put in front of your building. What's more impactful for your property? It's you decide. Number three, 2020 tombs. 2020, okay, while most of the world was stuck inside watching documentaries, more than 100 sealed coffins were found. And yes, this time they were occupied. Yeah, gross. Found, of course, in Saqqara, Egypt, Egyptian archeologists have never been more excited, which is a weird thing to say after what I just said. Maybe we'll find the body of Cleopatra. Wouldn't that just be dandy, I guess? The fact that we found over 100 of these still in great shape is mind blowing. It's actually pretty awesome. Grave robbers have been around since ancient Egyptian days and for all these to be untouched for this long that's good this is great I'm glad we found it instead of you know pirates the findings date back to 712 BC which was a period where Egypt was controlled by foreign civilizations like Persians or Greeks the idea that we're finding mummies is great and all but again do we really need to open them up do we need to find Alexander the Great this badly like what is he it's gonna be bones it's gonna be goop like we're willing to disrespect this many souls in the process it's kind of it's kind of ironic I don't know number two black tomb. We found a mysterious black granite tomb in Alexandria back in 2018. I remember this trending because I made several Brendan Fraser jokes on Twitter. Yeah, a lot of mummy talk happening that weekend. Things got real when the cousin of antiquities minister opened it up. Yeah, we just opened up a mysterious black granite tomb just because we're curious cats. When archaeologists found this massive untouched tomb, untouched for over 2,000 years might I add, on one hand that's a feat in itself, historical, great, discovery, awesome. But us humans, we have to just open it up and take a peek and just smell whatever's inside. Let's just do that, I guess. Maybe it's Alexander the Great. Who knows? Egyptian news outlet El Watan reported that the tomb was lifted only a few centimeters before every official involved at the construction site fled the scene. They straight up ran away. It smelled that bad. Mustafa Waziri, secretary general of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. The guy put his entire head in the tomb to make sure that it's safe. I mean, or you could just do this with your hand. That works. Why your head? Like, just do one of these. I mean, I get it. The guy's OG. Nothing ended up happening, I think. I don't know. Number one, King Tut. One of the greatest mysteries is of course the history of the young King Tut. Really young. Younger than you might think. The young boy became pharaoh at age 9 in 1332 BC. During his time ruling, the young king had to face a country in conflict. It wasn't exactly a, a chill time. At this point, Egypt and Nubia were going head to head over land. And not even 10 years into ruling, the young pharaoh died at age 18. It wasn't until 1922 until he was seen again. Howard Carter discovered the tomb of the lost king, appropriately, as you would have guessed, in the Valley of the Kings. This is where we could have been more careful, historically. When King Tut was discovered, they tried to move his body out of the oil that was coating the Often after this long, but in doing so, they damaged him. They were too rough. They were too excited with this, you know, old ass dude. So now it's next to impossible to tell what really took his life at such an early age. Yeah, we kind of blew it. We have some ideas though. It's not entirely hopeless. It's believed that King Tut had a broken leg. After some 3D scans were done, it appears the king may have not been in the best shape prior. He may have fallen off a chariot and then simply just cracked his leg and that's how he died. So if Tut passed at an early age out of nowhere, who was that tomb he was buried in really meant for? Some suggest the tomb was built for the lost queen, Queen Nefertiti, but again, still trying to figure this one out because we haven't found her yet. The former antiquities minister doesn't believe this at all. He strongly stands by his belief that the lost queen was one of the female mummies found in the Valley of the Kings. Tut passed away at 19, so many believe his own burial chamber wasn't even done being built yet, so they just threw him in hers. How rude is that? History is pretty rude. I don't if I can sum up history, I'd say it's rude. Yeah, that's a fair word. We still haven't found her final resting place, but with the aid of technology and 3D scans, I have a feeling we're getting pretty close. Starting us off at number 10 is the Padmana Baswami Temple. Good luck spelling that if you ever get it at a spelling bee. I hope you don't. But anyway, this temple is located in Kerala, India, and is one of 108 other temples that are devoted to the worship of Vishnu. The temple is under the care of the Travancore royal family, but in 2011, a man filed a case saying they mismanaged the assets of the temple. 
Bible. So the Supreme Court sent seven people to explore it and document its belongings, but it turned into a lot more than that. They found six massive secret vaults or chambers with doors made of iron and no visible hatch or opening. The chambers were named Chamber A to F and they've been able to open Chamber C to F many times. Chamber A took some time but they did get open as well, but Chamber B has stumped everyone. No one has any idea what the chamber contains but people believe it's holy in nature. But here's the thing, the temple has three doors. The first has metal grills on it but they managed to open that one. Behind that door was another wooden door which they also managed to open, however the last door made of iron had no ways of unlocking it whatsoever. Locals think if any human attempt with technology is made to try and open the door against its will, it'll unleash calamity into the city. There are even legends about the initial exploration committee where one member tried to open the door but fell ill, whilst another one lost his mum while trying to open it as well. Either way, can't we just leave something untouched? Maybe we don't need to know what's behind the last door. Chamber B can just forever just be secret Chamber B. Coming in at number 9 is the Kingdom of Lioness. Now legend has it Lioness, which is located in the British Isles of Scilly, one day became fully engulfed by the ocean. In that one day, it wasn't an overtime erosion ting, it was all in one day. People even believe that the 140 islands in its place now are just hilltops of the lost kingdom. Lioness was most famous for being part of Arthurian legend as the home of Tristan the resident hero. The one day drowning was even said to have occurred during the 6th century, which was the time of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So I I mean it is backed up historically and sort of geologically by the islands as well, loosely, very loosely. However, it's said that on that fated day, the rich of the kingdom put all their valuable belongings in tombs, hoping the tombs would float or at least survive the drowning as well as, I mean, themselves. That way they wouldn't be left with nothing when their home was fully submerged. The people didn't survive and the small tombs were also scattered everywhere. None have been found yet, but I think that's fine. The number of lost people attached to each of those tombs almost gives them all really bad karma or luck. Even if someone did find it, spending a dead man's treasure can just never go down well. Others went as far as to say they put their babies in the tombs as well, hoping they would float to the top and survive. So I mean, you could either find a chest with treasure or a skeleton baby. It's a 50-50. Of course, the existence of Lioness has never been confirmed, so it's hard to back up with evidence, but I mean, I believe it. At number 8, we have the Great Aztecs. The Great Temple of Tenochtitlan land was dedicated to the Aztec god of war and the Aztec god of rain and agriculture. The temple was built sometime after 1325 but it was rebuilt six times. The reconstruction model they made of what it looked like back in the day is absolutely stunning but now there are just ruins left. I hate when that happens and it happens quite a bit. Items that have been excavated can already be seen at museums but in 2015 another big discovery was made. Archaeologists found a tunnel passage underneath the temple that led to two sealed chambers and they believe inside are the remains of some of the earliest Aztec leaders or gods. They always thought the Aztecs cremated their leaders since they spent decades excavating and found nothing until now. So either these chambers are historical gold or they could be the resting place of Aztec gods who may then wreak havoc on us for disturbing their slumber. Whichever one you want to believe. Filling our number 7 slot is El Dorado, and I'm sure we've all heard of the legend of the golden city of El Dorado. Gaining a lot of attention in the 16th century, explorers and treasure hunters have been looking for El Dorado for as long as they knew it was a thing. I feel like I've been hearing about it since I was born. But El Dorado was actually the name of a mythical tribal chief of the Musca native people in Colombia. They say he covered himself in gold dust and submerged himself in a lake. Since then, the legend has gone from being about him to being about a city of gold, then a kingdom of gold and then an empire of gold. Despite centuries of searching, no one has been able to find El Dorado. I mean a whole kingdom of gold? Of course they weren't going to make that easy to find. Many speculate El Dorado the chief wasn't that mythical at all. They believe his tomb is the key to El Dorado. People have spent so long searching for the kingdom itself, they forgot where it all began. The man himself. A lot of conspiracy theorists believe if El Dorado's tomb is found and opened, the kingdom will follow suit. But open Opening his tomb could also be like opening Pandora's box and lead to complete destruction. It just can't be as easy as simply finding and opening a tomb and becoming unimaginably rich, can it? If it can, 
that's a one way ticket to Colombia for me. Now at number 6 is the Royal Cemetery. The cemetery in question is located outside Nanchang City, China and it's 2000 years old and it's bloody massive. It takes up 40,000 square meters and has 8 tombs as well as a chariot burial area with walls 900 meters long. But it also has a locked tomb in the main mausoleum that grabbed everybody's attention. Archaeologists hope that it will help identify whose burial site it is and at this point their only guess is that it was Liu He who was the most influential ruler during the Western Han Dynasty. The era itself is a bit blurry, but the loose story is that Lu assumed the throne, was then ousted, then he returned, and then he was forced out again. Major drama. The team found hundreds of terracotta figures, 10 tons of bronze coins, more than 10,000 things made of either gold, bamboo, jade, or iron, and they even found a road network and a drainage system. It sounds like these people were building a mini city, not just a burial site. Which, you know what? Do you. Either way, from the amount of valuables they already found there, is there really a need to open the locked tomb? If the guy went to this much effort to make his deathbed like this, I think we should just let him lie in it. Just let him, let him be. Why must we ruin things? We don't need to. Coming in at number 5 is the lost city of Kalahari. So back in 1885, Canadian entertainer the great Farini was one of the first to explore the unexplored Kalahari desert in southern Africa. When he came back he had photos with him which depicted ruins that were the remains of a lost civilization or so he thought. He saw a broken line of stone that looked like it could have been a wall at some point and he followed the remains and found heaps of flat stones that clearly had cement in between them. That's evidence of a city if I ever knew that. That was sarcasm by the way. After that many have tried to find the lost city, even Elon Musk's grandparents tried to find the city 12 times. In 2016 aerial scans confirmed the man made ruins the great Farini had described so whatever it was, it was real. But extreme conspiracy theorists believe all the flat half buried stones are the top part of a gigantic tomb belonging to one of the great leaders of one of the tribes living in the lost city. The theorists believe the leader and his tribe ensured his tomb would never be opened but performing rituals for it and on it and if for any unfortunate reason someone does try and open it, well I let your imagination wander. At number 4 is the intact tomb which is very rare considering most of these tombs are thousands and thousands of years old so finding one intact is a dream if anything. And with Egyptian tombs it's even harder, even King Tutankhamun's tomb has been spoiled. But anyway in 2018 Egyptian archaeologists found a 4400 year old tomb of a high priest called Watye hopefully I pronounced that right, didn't think I did, who lived during the 5th dynasty. Within the tomb there are 5 shaft tombs and 2 false doors. One of the shafts had been open and unsealed but the other 4 have stayed sealed. The 5th dynasty was the era in which the oldest copies of pyramid texts were carved into the pyramids. The tomb is around 10 meters long and is carved out of rock which doing with hand tools is bloody hard. I've never done it but it sounds bloody hard. The paintings and artwork they found are all really good quality despite having some water and time damage. However, they refuse to open the other tombs for an undisclosed reason, so perhaps that's all we need to know. Filling our number 3 slot is Joseph Bonamy. Joseph was an English sculptor, artist, but more importantly, Egyptologist. He went on the Hay Expedition where he sketched antiquities, and people speculated he had learned the secret to time travel on his time there. But what stands out about Joseph was his mysterious connection with socialite Hannah Courtois, who may have funded his expeditions. Hannah inherited a fortune, and when she died, her mausoleum was this massive Egyptian style crypt that Joseph had previously designed for her before he died. For 1854 it was distinct. Ironically enough Joseph is buried nearby and it's said that before he died he passed all his knowledge on to Hannah. Reuters were actually the ones who published a report about this in 1998 claiming her mausoleum contains a working time machine. A key for the tomb has been missing for quite some time which just adds more fuel to the fire. If it is a time machine, I would like to travel in time to ask Joseph what is actually happening. Now at number 2 is the lost city of Zed. Has anyone seen the movie of this because I have and I loved it but then it ended so abruptly and I was like oh my god is that the end are you kidding? That can't be it. I just, I just wasn't emotionally ready but anyway. I'm blabbing on. <laughs> British surveyor Colonel Percy Harrison Fawcett believed this indigenous city existed in the jungle of Mato Grosso, Brazil, and he decided to call it the Lost City of Zed. He based his belief on his own exploration of the Amazon River, as well as histories of South America that he had read. He never did find the Lost City in the end, and him and his son actually died trying. Many people believe that the indigenous people living in that area know exactly where the city is and how to get to it, but they've made it their life mission to stop outsiders from getting 
in or finding the entrance. Many believe they're guarding one of their ancestors' tombs which lies inside of the lost city. Others on the other hand believe it may even be Colonel Percy's tomb. Either way, if that many people are trying to stop you from finding something, odds are there's a good reason for it. And finally, at number one is Atlantis, not the luxury hotel resort and water park, the underwater lost city. Plato first mentioned Atlantis in 360 BC and it was meant to be an insanely powerful kingdom with technology more advanced than ours and an unmatchable navy. Fast forward around 9600 BC, a terrible disaster hits and the island sank into the sea never to be seen again. Many teams have tried to find Atlantis over the years, notably a man called Simcha Jacobovici, hopefully I said that right, who dove into the Mariana Trench. And all he found was six Bronze Age stone anchors near Spain which seemed to have come from a civilization existing 4000 years ago, which is still way off when Atlantis existed. But many people believe because their technology was so advanced, they found a way to disappear to us but still exist by themselves. Perhaps they cracked the code to living completely underwater as humans and that's what they've been doing since 9600 BC, who knows? Plato never clarified how advanced advanced actually was. Many people believe an underwater tomb belonged to one of Atlantis's early leaders is the entrance to the hidden kingdom. But do we really want to find it? What if they advanced even more being hidden away all this time? What if they've developed weaponry to face anyone who accidentally finds this tomb and exposes them? What if they're strong enough to take us down? I don't have any more what ifs. Should we really be seeking our demise? I think not. And I think you should agree with me. Thank you. Thank you.